This video is sponsored by DistroKid. Hey there, welcome back to the channel. My name is Andrew Clark, and in today's video, I wanna talk about the four best ways to record electric guitar at home. Whether it be for making Instagram reels, or TikToks, or YouTube videos, or maybe releasing an original song, or even a cover song on a streaming platform, these methods are kind of the industry standard for getting great guitar sounds without having to go to a professional studio. Now, if you are interested in releasing an official cover song on a streaming platform like Spotify or Apple Music, you need to make sure that you secure the correct licensing so that you don't get in trouble. And one of the coolest things about DistroKid is that they don't just handle the distribution of your music, but they also handle 100% of the legal stuff for you so that you can just focus on making the music that you love. If you already have a DistroKid membership, then a cover song is only gonna cost you $12 per song per year, which is significantly easier and cheaper than doing it any other way. If you don't have a DistroKid membership yet, then I have a special link for you where you can get 7% off your first year. I'll be sure to put the link at the top of the the description of this video as well. Thanks again to DistroKid for sponsoring this video. All right, so this is not a comparison of which of these recording methods is best. Each one has different pros and cons, and I can assure you one doesn't sound significantly better than the other. It's all just gonna come down to what gear you already have and what your needs are. While I'd love to do a comparison between all four methods using the exact same amp or amp model, I just simply don't have four versions of the exact same sound. So before we get into the methods, it's gonna be important to note that you are going to need a guitar, an electric guitar for all of these methods. And you're also gonna need something like this. Uh, this is a Focusrite Scarlett. It's an audio interface. You're gonna need some kind of audio interface to be able to transfer your guitar signal into your computer. If something like this is a little bit too expensive for you, there are USB interfaces uh, which don't offer quite as much flexibility. But if you're just getting started and you do have the money to spend, then I would recommend getting something like this. Now I know you're probably already thinking about the other methods for recording guitar. Uh, you can record directly to a mobile device now with a different kind of audio interface. And obviously there are all the analog methods as well. These these methods are simply the ones that I use and the ones that I've had the most success with. Okay, so for all of these recording methods, I'll be using my Sir Classic S Antique. Uh, I've also put together a small pedal board here. We've got a tuner, a fuzz, an overdrive, a delay, and a reverb. Then for when we're using an amp, we've got the Dr. Z Easy G50. And then the audio interface I'm using is a Universal Audio Apollo Twin X. Okay, so method number one is using a traditional guitar amp and miking the speaker. This one's really straightforward. The sound of the guitar is gonna come out of a speaker. It's gonna be loud out in the room, you're gonna take a microphone like this, you've got the speaker like this, you're gonna put the microphone up to it, and depending on where you place that microphone around the speaker, you're gonna be able to get different tones and sounds. An important thing to remember is mic placement, but also the actual mic is going to have a large effect on the way that your guitar amp and guitar tone is translated. Your microphone is gonna to have to be plugged into an audio interface with an XLR cable, and it's as simple as that. It's just like if you were recording vocals or anything else, except you're placing the microphone in front of your guitar amp. Now, I live in an apartment here, so it's totally unrealistic for me to turn up a guitar amp. It just is not something I can do, and if you live in an apartment, that's probably the same situation for you. So what I'll be using for this test is my ISO cab that I built myself. It's basically just a big black box with a speaker and a microphone inside of it, and then the inside of it is acoustically treated. It's got some bass ports so that the air can pass in and out of it, but even with a loud amp like this, it's completely silent. The drawbacks to something like this is that the ones that are on the market don't tend to sound that good. This one I built myself. It was quite expensive to build. And honestly, you can hear that it's a microphone inside of a box. It does have that kind of closed off sound to it. Okay, so this is gonna be the sound of a 12 inch Dr. Z eminent speaker and an SM57. Okay, so now I'll kick on a couple of pedals so you can hear how it's kind of interacting with those.
So this method sounds great. It really does feel great. Obviously you're using a real amp. There's a reason this is kind of the go-to method for a lot of professional studios. The big issue is there are a ton of drawbacks if you are recording at home. It's not reasonable to crank up an amp like this. And like I said, the ISO cab comes with its own drawbacks too. All right, so for method number two, we've got an amp, a load box, and impulse responses. So for this method, we're gonna be ditching our speaker or speaker cabinet, and we're ditching our microphone as well. In place of those, we're gonna be using something like this, which this is a load box and an impulse response loader. And a very important thing to mention when it comes to guitar amps is that speakers provide resistance to the amplifier. So what that means is when an amplifier, especially tube amp, is turned on, it requires some sort of load to be going into. So if you turn on a tube amp and you do not have it plugged into a load or a speaker of any sort, you can actually damage your amp. Now, usually it'll just blow a fuse and things will be okay, but you can damage your amp. So because of this, we obviously can't just plug our speaker out into our audio interface to record. Instead, we need some sort of load box and there are a whole bunch of different options out there. I think the most popular and famous one is the Universal Audio Oxbox and they can kind of come in at all different price points. This one here is the Sur Reactive Load IR and it's kind of cool because like the Oxbox, it doubles uh, as an IR loader as well. So it is providing a speaker load to the amp and then it is also sending your guitar signal through an impulse response before it goes into your audio interface. So for this kind of a setup, I have the amp running out of the speaker out into the back of this box. This box is then providing a load. It is applying an IR. Now these ones are selectable on this one. I can load my own or select the ones that they have stock in here. And then out from there, it's going directly into the audio interface. If you wanna save a little bit of money, you can actually buy a load box that doesn't have the IR loader built into it. Instead, once the guitar has made its way into the computer through the audio interface, you can use a plugin inside your DAW to apply an impulse response in there. So without getting too complicated, what these impulse responses are gonna do is they're essentially gonna apply a filter that sounds like whatever speaker or microphone you wanna be using sounds like. The sound of your raw amp without any sort of speaker or anything like that straight out of the load box, it doesn't sound good. It's not something you'd ever wanna use. So you do have to use some sort of impulse response with a load box and a tube amp like this. So the amp is set the exact same way as it was when it was going into the ISO cab, but because the impulse response we're using is using a different microphone and speaker setup, it's gonna sound different than our ISO cab. Now we'll listen through a few pedals.
Okay, on to method number three, we've got an amp simulator pedal. Now these days, for both live and recording guitar players, these are incredibly popular. Universal Audio makes some great ones. Strymon Iridium is really awesome. We've also got the Joyo stuff that I've reviewed here on my channel. And there's a whole bunch more out there that I've never even had the opportunity to play. In this video, I'm gonna be using the Universal Audio Dream 65 to essentially replicate everything that is going on over here. So this little box is gonna have my entire amp inside of it. It's also got impulse responses inside of it as well. And it's essentially gonna digitally recreate an amplifier and then send that sound to my audio interface and into my computer. So as you can see, using something like this is very simple. You're essentially gonna take your pedals or if you have no pedals, your guitar is gonna go straight into the pedal, out from the pedal, it's going right into the audio interface. So there's no guitar amp, there's no speaker, nothing like that. So an amp simulation pedal is an inexpensive way to get really good guitar tone. Uh, real tube amps, especially good tube amps, are gonna cost you a decent amount of money. Whereas a pedal like this, this is on the expensive side for an amp sim pedal as well, it's about $400. Uh, you can get something like the Joyo American Sound for just 40 bucks and it's basically going to do the same thing. And then you're not dealing with a loudspeaker from an amp or having to go out and buy extra gear to even be able to get some sort of silent recording solution. So this pedal is designed to sound like a deluxe reverb, which is a different sound than this. So while the other two are both using the same app, this one's gonna have a bit of a different vibe, but that's okay. Uh, it's its own thing and it sounds good. So this is what it sounds like. And we'll just hit it with a few pedals. One last thing to mention about an amp simulation pedal like this is many of them allow you to actually bypass the speaker IR. So if you want, you can kind of do another hybrid setup where you use this to get like your amp tone and then you can still tweak the IRs inside of your DAW like GarageBand or Logic or whatever you use. All right, so method number four is everything in the box. And what that means is we're gonna use no external hardware, no amp, no load box, no amp simulator pedal. The only thing we're gonna use is our audio interface our guitar is going to go directly into that and we're going to use an amp simulation plug-in inside of our DAW. Now there are literally endless guitar amp plugins out there and even many DAWs like Logic are gonna have ones that already come with it. The best thing about this method is that you really only need a laptop or a computer, an audio interface, your guitar, and a couple cables and you're done. And because it's a plugin, even after you've recorded the guitar with the plugin on it, you can go in there and make tweaks. You can totally change the amp and do whatever you want. These virtual guitar amp plugins have a wide range of prices. Uh, you can even even find plenty of free ones out there that do sound killer. But just because it's what I have experience with, I'm gonna be using Guitar Rig Pro 6, and this is what it sounds like.
And now with a few pedals. Okay, so there we have my four favorite ways to record electric guitar at home. If you're not really into using a computer and you want to use an iPad or tablet, uh, your iPhone or an Android phone, there are audio interfaces out there specifically designed for those platforms. And if you guys want, in the future, I can make a video about those as well. For those of you guys that are maybe a little bit more old school, obviously there are some really cool analog ways to be able to record guitar uh, the way that they used to do it back in the day. Still, those are probably going to always be the best sounding methods. But realistically, those probably aren't the methods you're going to be using when you're recording guitar at home. These four methods are all ways that I've personally recorded my guitar for all the different types of music and videos that I've put out into the world. So I really hope that you find one or two of them helpful. And if you're already into recording, I'd love to know the method that you already use. Please make sure you leave that in the comments below. I'd like to say another really big thank you to DistroKid for sponsoring this video. Please make sure you go check out that link in the description below. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and please also consider subscribing to the channel. I release new guitar content here every single week. And with all that said, thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next one.